In a small town down in Arkansas Where the river flows There's a man with a passion That everybody knows Howdy, howdy everybody. Welcome to HT's EDC. Coming at you this Monday morning from the back patio. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. But without further ado, hey, hey, you gonna talk to the good folks this morning? Huh? You ain't turning around profiling. That is Abs. She is in her spot, and uh, we are ready to get at it once I get a a good wet whistle this morning as uh, brother Terry calls it gotta wet your whistle how is everybody did y'all have a good one I had a good weekend most of you know uh, went Saturday to a gun and knife show with my good buddy uh, Dwayne and uh, which is always a good time uh, We've had better days as far as the picking, but uh, that happens. They're not all going to be stellar. Uh, we did come home with seven new knives, and uh, hey, I call that a blessing. Could have came home with none. So that is, uh, pick your battles on that one. Uh, a lot of people are like, you got seven knives, what are you complaining about? I, you're right. Uh, and, and, and really, we're not. I don't think I was complaining. Just saying that the show, in itself, at the show, did not have the selection. Uh, it was very another show that was very gun dominant. Which, folks, it, it's a gun and knife show. Uh, and honestly, these ones, at least in our area, are always gun dominant. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, the case everywhere, but. Sometimes, you know, a good show for a knife collector is a, I don't know, 65, 35, 70, 30 split. Always being the 65, 70 being the gun. The guns are always going to be the dominant is, is, you know, the star of the show there. But a good show for us is, you know, 30, 35% uh, knives. Uh, this one was another one. The last two we've been to has been in a 90-10 or 95-5 uh, guns. Uh, the slim pickings for the knife folks. The knife uh, vendors just did not uh, come out of these last two ones as strong. But I digress. We had a good time and we did have, I, I got to take Dwayne to uh, the little knife shop over in Jefferson, Texas, about an hour away. And that place is just absolutely awesome. Um, we found, Dwayne found two knives there, and I got one there uh, from that store. So that, that put a little cherry on top of the day uh, anyways. But, gotta say a quick birthday shout out to one of my dear friends, Miss Dorinda. Uh, you know, I won't say your last name on here for privacy, but Miss Dorinda, she is our she is our Arkansas family up here, more affectionately known as Mama D, and it is her birthday today, and I believe you're 36. You told me is that is that right, Miss Miss Dorinda? You're 36. Uh, don't look a day older than 36 to me, but uh, shout out to you, happy birthday, Miss Dorinda. So, let's get into a knife. And uh, one of, this is a knife, showed it a little earlier in my morning short. And uh, this is a knife that uh, I scored. One of my mm, three scores that I picked up uh, from the gun and knife show. So I, I toted three knives home uh, from that show. And this is, this is my favorite. You guys saw the Gerber, Gerber Gator. I'm going to have to say the Gerber Gator is my favorite from that show. And I know it's not the best knife of the three that I took home. Uh, or definitely not the most expensive. But for reasons you've already heard, uh, in my knife collecting journey, the Gerber Gator has a hallowed special spot for me. So... 
as weird as it sounds, the, the knife of the day for me is going to be that blacked out Gerber Gator I showed yesterday. If you hadn't, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you're just watching today's video, go back to my last video and you will see the knife I'm talking about. It's awesome and it has a awesome spot in the big guy's heart. But this is probably the best knife I got from the show and I absolutely love it. Oh yeah, we have another cigar, cigar frame, Remington bullet knife and shout out to the Muskrat Mafia. Brother 865, Brother Aaron, 865. This is a muskrat, and uh, gotta support, gotta support my mafia. There we go. And go ahead and throw the little disclaimer out here. Remington calls this a muskrat. HT's calling it a muskrat, and we are gonna rep the muskrat mafia. In my definition, we already done this a million times. This is a moose, but hey, I am the, I'm not a knife manufacturer. They can call their knife whatever they want to, and they call this a muskrat. So this is the Remington Bullet Bullet Muskrat. So shout out to the Muskrat Mafia today. Go ahead and turn this thing around. We have the nice, of course, bullet shield on this, making it uh, the Remington Bullet series. And we have that, what I love about these knives, let me close this clip before I cut myself here. We have that spay, that funky spay blade that uh, had a baby with a spear point. Uh, just a unique looking, uh, spay blade we're gonna call it a spay blade but uh, it's a little different looking of a spay blade see what I mean it's not exactly got that short it's got a longer uh, longer kind of nose on it here if you if you remember uh, on a you remember on a case trapper this little nose right here this bridge is a lot shorter this uh, this swoop comes up a little higher just a little subtle difference, but I actually love that. <laughs> I think that is a more aesthetically attractive spade blade. Uh, just something that's kind of unique to these knives. And of course, the other blade. Kind of a Turkish clip. It's a clip point blade, but it is not that long swooping like a California clip. It comes right here and then boom, it immediately starts its drop, its descent on that clip. Uh, we're calling this a Turkish clip. Uh, has the Remington little etch on there. You know where we stand on that. Could do without it. A couple of polishings, you could get rid of it. And uh, right here on the tank stamp, we have, what all do we have? Made in the USA. Remington UMC and over here we have the model number which is R4356 and I think they have the date on the spay blade more of the same we have that same tank stamp Remington USA on the spay blade and over here we have 1993 so, yours truly graduated high school in 92, so this was one year after that. So, by my definition, and uh, when it comes to uh, vent other vintage goods, uh, 25 years, uh, if something is 25 years or older, it is vintage. So, I am saying this is vintage because... I am definitely vintage, so, but loving this, love these cigar patterns in hand. Let me just show you that, go ahead and get it in my left hand. Ah, uh, these things are just, they're round, there's no way there's a hot spot and no way it's just not ergonomic. It is just, 
and it's just so neutral it's good there's just nothing not to like about it and this is a big hefty knife by the way this thing is four uh was it four and a, actually it was between four and an eighth and four and a quarter they list this as a four and a quarter but it's honestly by my tape measure it is just a tick it's over four and an eighth but not quite four and a quarter whatever that whatever that marking is but uh it's an over four inch knife which four inches four and a quarter that is the ht sweet spot and as you can see if i choke up right here and i come up to this choil i got the whole bolster but if i just get back on it here naturally about half that bolster i'm I, i've got plenty of landing spot just a good firm grip on this knife for your cutting I love it and like I said it's got some heft too I haven't taken it to my scale in there but we're not buck 110 or buck 112 weight but we ain't far off I'm gonna say this is it's pushing five ounces and this is just the old HT hand scale I'm gonna say four and a half five ounce knife so it's got some heft and look how thick it is yeah, it is. And, and we can also look at these back springs and liners. Hadn't took a look at that yet. But this is a good, broad, hand-filling knife. And uh, y'all want to do a little walk and talk? We can do that. No half stops on these. But we'll get up here and I'll be quiet and let the Remington bullet do its thing for you. Nice. Oh yeah, these things are made so good, like a tank. It's my second one. Uh, this one is the good old Stagalon Delrin, uh, where they've jigged it. Um, to kind of look like, you know, faux stag. Uh, but this is, and, and Remington, and this is a Camillus made knife, by the way. This is Remington. There's the missus photo bombing. You gonna say hello? I can get my shoes off the line. <laughs> you gonna say hello? Hello. Knife community. Knife community. That is the missus. Uh, always a pleasant, always a pleasant interruption. But uh, where was I? See, she 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 just throws me off when she comes out here. Uh, in a good way. Delrin, back to the knife. This is some good Delrin. And this is, I was, there were, now I remember where I was, Camillus. Camillus actually made these knives for Remington. And Camillus folks could do some Delrin. Uh, if you see these transitions on these bolsters, there is no gaps. It is nice and smooth. And to be honest, if this is bone and you drop it on this concrete floor here, you got a 50-50 chance if you drop some good bone. Don't get me wrong. I love bone and got a ton of them in there. and going to keep buying them because I love, 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 love bone. But they they do come with their wrist, you know. If, if you drop them or whatever, getting cracks in those pins, if you drop a bone knife, you're about 50-50 when you pick it up to be Crack, crack pin. It's Delrin, pretty hardy. Pretty, pretty darn tough. So you want to get a big, honking, tough brood of a knife, man, and uh, you're going to put it through the paces. Delrin's, uh, Delrin is not a bad option. And I think it looks good. Uh, I think they, uh, I think this is a good looking knife. But you know how opinions are. But this is my second one of this knife. Uh, like I said, I have another one in true bone uh, that has a real thick, beautiful bone covers on my first one. Now I've got one in Delrin. So this is gonna be a user, a worker, and I absolutely, lootly, lootly, lootly love it. So, Super Joe. That is
is one of the uh, one of the finds from the show uh, that I'm very happy to have picked up, and uh, that's what I that's what I got for you today. Like I said, check out yesterday's video, and you will see that Gerber uh, Gerber Gator I found that was all blacked out, heavily customized, and you can go over there and listen to my my rant uh, about. Uh, what that knife means to me uh, it's pretty cool it, it's it's a knife that got it all started folks for me uh, many years ago so it will always hold a special place in my heart but we're at 15 minutes finally gonna have one under 20 minutes let you guys go so for me and abs y'all get out there and show me what you're toting today outside of that we'll see you tomorrow god bless Knives gleaming under that old porch light. He'll tell their stories deep into the night. Reviews and torture texts, it's a sight to see. HGZ.